the Price Check Pro Shop located inside the arena and there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets, as well as beadwork and other jewelry that is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. And we cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena. For a unique historical visit, whether you're here for a day or evening sporting event, to shop at our amazing shop, or just to get some food at the Power Play Cafe, our staff is eager to serve. Please visit us online at the Onondaga Nations Arena.com. Huge shout out to Firekeepers Restaurant, who is the sponsor of this game. They serve breakfast six days a week and are open every day except for Monday. You can get anything from the big breakfast, meat lover skillet, to a frittata, or the country style scrambler. Guaranteed to have something for everyone in your group. Firekeepers is also open for dinner Tuesday through Friday, where you can get everything from a hot turkey sandwich to a turkey dinner, spaghetti. Whatever you want, guaranteed to have something for everybody in your group. Help support those who support us to make this happen. Leaves it there for Bertrand. Bertrand with the diving jump. Lax Nye or Lacrosse Invitational North America is the premier fall invitational tournament in all of North America with teams traveling internationally to come. Nonstop action. Get your team registered for there. If you've never seen it before, we've got the last two years hosted. Team USA was there last year trying to get ready for the World Games coming up. Huge shout out to Scott and East and Connor Wilson for all they do for Blue Squatch Productions and helping support us as we continue to grow. What a drive by Blaze! It was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament. Thank you so much again to the Lax Nye group. Tucked away amidst the rolling hills of central New York lies a hidden gem, a place where people gather to celebrate and play games, children, adults, and elders alike. Along the north-south passway, now called Route 81, nine miles south of the city of Syracuse at exit 16 on the lands of the Onondaga, stands a longhouse of history and recreation. Tasha Hilde Dakwa translated from the ancient Onondaga language means where they play games and under the roof of this great house the Onondaga Nation Arena serves the surrounding community with a full staff of maintenance security and all other custodial needs to ensure a safe and secure facility they also feature an elders room with seats and tables dedicated to those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating it is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home cooked specials and has a very diverse selection and patrons always leave satisfied and full and will often become regulars and for those sports enthusiasts out there we have the price check pro shop located inside the arena and there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets, as well as beadwork and other jewelry that is made by local Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. And we cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena. For a unique historical visit, whether you're here for a day or evening sporting event, to shop at our amazing shop, or just to get some food at the Power Play Cafe, our staff is eager to serve. Please visit 
us online at the Onondaga Nations Arena.com. Huge shout out to Firekeepers Restaurant, who is the sponsor of this game. They serve breakfast six days a week and are open every day except for Monday. You can get anything from the big breakfast, meat lover skillet, to a frittata, or the country style scrambler. Guaranteed to have something for everyone in your group. Firekeepers is also open for dinner Tuesday through Friday, where you can get everything from a hot turkey sandwich to a turkey dinner, spaghetti, whatever you want. Guaranteed to have something for everybody in your group. Help support those who support us to make this happen. Leaves it there for Bertrand. Bertrand with a diving jump. Lax and I or Lacrosse Invitational North America is the premier fall invitational tournament in all of north america with teams traveling internationally to come non-stop action get your team registered for there if you've never seen it before we've got the last two years hosted team usa was there last year trying to get ready for the world games coming up huge shout out to scott and east and connor wilson for all they do for blue squatch productions and helping support us as we continue to grow what a drive by blaze it was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament thank you so much again to the lax nye group Tucked away amidst the rolling hills of central New York lies a hidden gem, a place where people gather to celebrate and play games, children, adults, and elders alike. Along the north-south passway, now called Route 81, nine miles south of the city of Syracuse at exit 16 on the lands of the Onondaga, stands a longhouse of history and recreation. Tasha Hilde Dakwa translated from the ancient Onondaga language means where they play games and under the roof of this great house the Onondaga Nation Arena serves the surrounding community with a full staff of maintenance security and all other custodial needs to ensure a safe and secure facility they also feature an elders room with seats and tables dedicated to those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating it is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home cooked specials and has a very diverse selection and patrons always leave satisfied and full and will often become regulars and for those sports enthusiasts out there we have the price check pro shop located inside the arena and there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related to the Onondaga Athletic Clubs with the other Red Hawks teams. They also have helmets, hoodies, traditional wooden sticks, as well as a wide range of native craft displays with a full selection of the favorite Pendleton blankets, as well as beadwork and other jewelry oh, okay. that Let's is made by fun. local everybody Onondaga crafters and has a great selection any time of year that you wish to stop by. And we cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nations Arena. For a unique historical visit, whether you're here <laughs> Fucking guys, huh? <laughs> Should have gave him a jersey to wear under his, uh, under his, uh, oh, shit, mic'd up, sorry. Welcome back, lacrosse friends, to the Northeast Invitational, the first annual here on Onondaga Nation, in the Onondaga Nation Arena. We are into game five of six of the round robin play in the pools. This is the Woodsman versus the Maine Northman. Clock's good. 
Go late. in pool B. Go late. So um, again, CTC Elite beat I, both of these second, teams. They beat the North in 12 to six. They beat okay. the Woodsman five to four luck, in earlier six. games today. So CTC Set. is first from that pool. They will be in the second semifinal at 7.45 tonight. The winner of this game will be second in the pool. They'll play at five at 6.30 in the first semifinal. The loser has the rest of the day off. They're playing in for fifth place tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. against the Utica Yeti. Here's the first chance for the Woodsman. That shot goes wide. They're down to six left on the shot clock. I guess you can see that, actually. Jet! That shot does get on target. Brian Duncan turns to the side. It'll be a fresh 30 for the Woodsman if they can come up with it. Battle along the board. Hey! And it will be Woodsman possession. Here's Angus LeBourne. There's a rip from the outside. That one somehow winds up off to the side of Duncan on that shot from Jimerson. And the Northwind are back in black going left to right on your screen. They wore their white jerseys earlier in the day. Van Bibber couldn't handle that pass. Ball moved ahead by Hara McComber, and it's going to get there to Nikki Snow. Now it winds up with Lee Thomas, number 11. He's just waiting for the rest of the cohort to arrive. That pass didn't get there, racing out to try and get onto it. For Maine, sorry, that was um, Gus Eisenman. There's a stop by Nye McComber. He and Brian Duncan, the starting goaltenders, facing off. Again, the winner of this to the semis, still in the hunt for the championship. The loser goes to the fifth place game tomorrow against the Utica Yeti. That pass a little bit behind Mark Henderson. Pass ahead to Brendan Murphy. He comes away with it, racing down. Had a couple options, chooses Kyle Dolan. Dolan's shot gets off target, it's off into the corner. 15 on the shot clock. I mean, a loose ball foul and the Woodsman will take it. Mark Henderson wants the ball, he gets it. On the lobbed outlet pass from John Printup. Here's Nikki Snow, handed off to Angus LeBourne. Saw him go out with the knee injury in the last game. He came back though in that one. He was critical to that close game. The Woodsman falling just 5-4 to CTC Elite. Penalty coming to the Woodsman, delayed call. Extra attacker coming out for the Northman. They've got seven to shoot. Kyle Baker gets stripped. Nice trail check. Three seconds to get the shot off. That's stopped. And Angus LeBourne Jr. is going to go off for the slash for two minutes or less as we are four minutes into the first of three 15 minute running time periods with three minutes of stop time at the end of the third mm -hmm. if the game is within three goals. To do for five. Baker will start with it at the top of the formation on the power play. Over to Murphy. <clears throat> Baker back to Murphy. He'll fire one, scores. Finds a gap in Nyma Comber. Where does he fit this one in? Oh, just near pipe. And just the catch alone by Brendan Murphy, pretty impressive. It wasn't a 
perfect pass, kind of got in towards his hip. Watch as he's gonna give it to Baker, get it back pretty quickly, and kind of jammed him in the chest a little bit, in the belly, but he is able to make the catch, get his hands away from himself, and get that shot that he bounces home. Great start by Brendan Murphy, who was fired up to come in and join the team today. Henderson down, they're gonna lob it up to the high formation. That shot from the outside, ripped by Jaden Jimerson, but stopped by Duncan. Duncan wants a checking in the crease call, he's not gonna get it. Run ahead by Nazir Tingling. Tingling will stay out, pulls it down, goes to the net, runs out of real estate, goes in behind the net as he is watched there by Nikki Snow playing a defensive shift. Five to shoot, Eisenman. They will not get anything on net, so the 30 will expire and the Woodsman will get it back. Northman lead by one on the Murphy goal. That pass down to LeBourne. Just so good to see him back on the floor. Goes down to Henderson, all alone. Big save, Duncan. That acrobatic athleticism comes to the fore again. They'll slow it down. Nikki Snow with the ball. Lots of time after the reset. Push pass through to Henderson. Ducks through, dives. No good. You cannot do crease, crease dives. Lebrecht all the way through, fighting to the net, gets the shot off, but just misses wide. Here's Kane Kettle. Shot from the outside, foot save, Brian Duncan. Blake Foglio. The double zero, gets over center, then throws away the pass. River Monter is slowing things down. He's gonna stay for an offensive set. The Bourne drops it off there for Jimerson. Crease violation, Duncan had made the stop anyway. Good catch by Eisenman with a little bit of pressure. That pass gets over against the boards, but they will track it down. Lebrecht has it. Lebrecht gets away from a couple of checks, but is eventually stripped by Kane Kettle. He fights to get it back. Will that be a fresh 30? It will not. The Woodsman did not possess the ball, so Lebrecht takes that shot, stopped by Nyma Comber. Here comes Nikki Snow. Lee Thomas was directing traffic. Gets through, takes an offside shot. That one's wide. They got four seconds left on the shot clock. Nikki Snow will just rip one from downtown. That kind of bounced up into the gear of Duncan and caused a bit of a problem. Now the Northmen kind of trapped in their own end, but a nice pass to get it out to Dubay. Heads up play. I think it was Gavin Chambers making that outlet. Staying nice and poised. Len Dubay. Back up to Josh Jordan. Oh, Jordan tried the feed through, was not there. Keith Printup steals it, makes the pass ahead. There's a chance for the Woodsman. That one just wide on the far side. Ripped by Brad McGowan. Eisenman reverses direction and shovels it ahead to Lebrecht. Ningling, spinning away from a check. Or sorry, Tingling. Ball 
Ball pops loose. Brendan Murphy, who has the goal in the game, is taken off. Look at the wheels. He's got the shot. He's got the speed. That's a save by Nyma Comer. Reaches behind him. It was in front, but he was not aware of that. This is the fifth of six round robin games among group play. Hidden ball trick. They didn't think it was buying it, so they move on. Kane Kettle passes on. Here's Nikki Snow. Watched by Dubé. Backdoor quick stick attempt. Kane Kettle didn't get through the defenders. That one was blocked by Peyton Van Bibber. Dubé across to Lebrecht coming off the bench. He'll shoot on the run. Nice save, McComber, as he goes down. Shovels it across, and Nikki Snow gets going up for the Woodsman. Northman set up in the offensive zone. Baker along the board, double teamed. Ball pops loose. It's going to be scooped up there by Brian McComber. And the Woodsman up into the offensive zone. Whoa. That pass absolutely ripped by Brad McGowan, but not to anybody. And the Northman will come back the other direction. Foglio. Pulls up, gonna hand it off to Murphy. Three and a half to go in the first. Murphy still the only goal scorer so far in a one nothing main edge. Josh Jordan's shot was blocked and you can tell who it is because Keith Brintup went limping into the corner. Nice attempt there, but Jordan couldn't find the mark. Gets into McComber and it'll be Woodsman Ball going back the other way. Snow ducks and runs. Sprints up over center. Sorry, that's Jaden Jimerson. Penalty coming on top of the crease. A little jousting happening. Are they both going or is it just Peyton Van Bibber? I think it's both. Van Bibber and River hey, He's got the call, but it sounds like he wants one. <laughs> Hey, 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 don't. Black, four minutes, high stick. So it's just the high sticking call to Van Bibber, which gives a power play to the Woodsman. We approach, it's a four minute double minor. Oh, and that's a blast from Jaden Jimerson. Just steps back, steps into it, and calls his own number to rip one just inside the post past Brian Duncan. To tie this game up 1-1, that'll wipe out the first of the double minor, first half of it. It's a very well-placed shot by Jimerson. Woodsman will remain on the power play, power play for two minutes or less. We've got a minute and a half to go here in the first of three 15 minute running time periods. Dolan for the Northman to take the draw against River Montour for the Woodsman. Montour a little flinch but managed to hold himself. And somebody from Maine came in early. That'll give possession to the Woodsman to get things started on this power play. We're all tied up 1-1. Henderson, down low, gets it back. Angus Laborn on his offside. Big rip. So I thought I saw one of the refs reaching his whistle up to his mouth, looking like he might call an illegal pick. Doesn't wind up mattering. His main makes a save, but Dubé, or Baker is right there. And that's a stop by Nye McComber. Great chance for the Northman captain, Kyle Baker. Henderson slows things down, gets it up top to Lee Thomas. Thomas, sub shot, 
stopped by <laughs> Brian Duncan, who manages to cover the ball up with his stick as he is laying on the floor, just kind of rolls the stick over it very casually. <laughs> and nice attempt there as the buzzer was about to sound. Jack Anzalone flicked it behind the back. It gets up out of play, and we are through 15 minutes with a two to one lead for the Maine North. When I'm Steven Stamp, this is the Northeast Invitational on Blue Squatch Productions. Wow. Translated from the ancient Onondaga language means where they play games. And under the roof of this great house, the Onondaga Nation Arena serves the surrounding community with a full staff of maintenance, security, and all other custodial needs to ensure a safe and secure facility. They also feature an elders room with seats and tables dedicated to those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant regular seating. It is adorned with portraits of the faces of players who have molded lacrosse through the generations of Onondaga from the history to the contemporary players of today's game. The arena also features the Power Play Cafe, which is more than just an arena concession stand. It is geared towards daily specials and can rival any restaurant with its home cooked specials and has a very diverse selection and patrons always leave satisfied and full and will often become regulars. And for those sports enthusiasts out there, we have the Price Check Pro Shop located inside the arena and there is a wide range of lacrosse and hockey equipment which has all of your needs with all sports apparel related Welcome back, lacrosse friends. Second period underway. It's a two to one main, no, it's a one one tie. That makes more sense. I was just believing the scoreboard. There's one one, Woodsman on the power play still for the second half of the high sticking double minor. Oh, there's a goal and I think Brendan Murphy's stick on stick check may have changed the trajectory a bit of that Angus LeBourne Jr. shot. Murphy's going to go and apologize to Duncan. He was just trying to play some solid D. Yeah, he reached out with the one hand, and that definitely changed things. Duncan reacting to where the, it looked like the ball was going, and it changed course en route. Not much you knew about one like that. It's a two to one Woodsman lead. We're back to even strength early in the second period. Har McComber comes away with it. Nikki Snow will take the pass from Jimerson. Back to Jimerson behind the back. Nice reaction save. Not a lot of mustard on that shot, so Duncan had time to get over there. Boy, as quickly as Duncan moves, he almost would have gotten out of the way on that bit of a change up but he just tosses it aside with the right arm. Back to the Woodsman though, as they get a fresh 30, they've still got 17, that pass is too low for Jimerson. It's picked off, Kyle Baker playing some D shifts, trying to run transition. Nice pass to Josh, oh, led it ahead to Josh Jordan. Jordan couldn't quite take the bounce pass and Harry McComber hits the man off the bench. That's a rip and a save by Duncan on the LeBourne shot. Outlet pass, here comes Dolan. Dolan makes the pass. Not a bad idea. Brecker on his wrong, or Lebrec on his wrong side, but still the more dangerous option probably with the defender heading over wisely to the man with the ball. Here's a shot by Jaden Jimerson, and the rebound is put back in. It goes off the boards and comes straight out to Tylen Dibo. so hard for the defenders when a shot is taken and ricochets off the boards they're facing up they have to turn around and find it whereas the forward who's coming in can see it the whole way knows exactly where to go and that one really works out for Tyler Dybo 
give him a three to one lead. The DJ playing some ACDC in honor of Maine being back in black after wearing their white jerseys early. Nikki Snow. That one gets loose. Dolan tries to get it. LaPorn all over him. Ball still on the floor. Rolls out. It's going to be scooped. No, it's not going to be scooped up there. Duncan. He makes even the, the routine saves look pretty exciting. That behind the back shot from Kane Kettle. Swallowed up by Duncan. The pass doesn't connect. Gets away from Gavin Chambers. Northman trying to pick it up along the boards. They do so. Baker with the ball, goes to the net, hard twister. McComber just left the stick there to stop it. We're gonna have a holding call on the Woodsman. That was Kyle Baker driving to the net and drawing that penalty. Just an effort play by Baker. Absorbs the big hit at the last moment there. I believe was that, that was John Printop hitting him. Nope. So Hara McComber, McComber takes the two minute holding call. So the Northmen down three to one as we're four and a half minutes into the second period, have an opportunity to try and get it back. Baker will be at the top of the power play. Murphy on the shooter spot. Lebrecht is down low. Over to Josh Jordan. Hard rip Murphy, but McComber was, was there for that one. Outlet pass, breakaway chance, it's a two on zero. Oh, oh and Brad McGowan just couldn't corral that one. Now the Northmen come back the other way. They're gonna slow it down and set up the power play. Eisenman will run past the ball carrier. Anzalone. Here's the captain Baker at the top, four righties. We got Josh Short and the lone lefty on the far side. Hard rip Baker. That's stopped by McCumber. There's a penalty being blown down behind the play. Too many men on the woodsman. So that is going to be a five on three for Maine. They just want to get going so they can enjoy as much time five on three as they can. A little rotating for the Northmen. They want to set up, they want to have this five on three. Baker, skip pass to Jordan, down to Tingling. Tingling's shot stopped, a little spin, almost got away from the Woodsman. Here's a break, three on five, great trail check. Brendan Murphy, what a game he is having. He has just come in with a burst of energy for the Northmen. Dolan will step over center and give it to Josh Jordan. Jordan's thinking shot. That one comes off the backboards. Ricochets off of Anzalone. It's quite a play to just fling that one out. Anzalone, you can see he felt that one as it got onto his back. The pass down from Baker doesn't get to Anzalone. It's loose along the boards. It'll be scooped up by Dolan. Jordan has to get a shot up. Oh, nice pass. He knew they had more time than they but just enough time anyway to get that shot off. Great backdoor chance, but it stopped. McComber with another save, another save. That one might have been the easiest of the three, but still a dandy. It's gonna run, be run back up by Brad McGowan. He finds the man coming off the bench. That's a little too zesty for LeBourne Jr. Dolan chops down, knocks it loose and takes a bump and throws it away to McGowan. Oh, and that one almost was dangerous. That was dangerous. Comes off the backboards. Angus LeBourne Jr. with the goal to extend the lead to four to one. Just a series of issues for the Northmen on that one. The thrown away pass, and then nobody picking up the two woodsmen down alone on the crease. It's just a communication breakdown for the Northmen. Keith Printup on the draw for the Woodsman. Up against Anzalone. Battle along the center line. It's gonna be a loose ball push in the back. 
Not much question there by Josh Jordan. And Woodsman will get possession. Too many men call. Yeah, the Woodsman had six players on the floor. So that's a possession call on the offensive end. And we go back the other way. Maine running with it. Josh Jordan. Oh, he was looking. He saw Eisenman in the, on the back door calling for the ball, but did not think there was a lane. It didn't look like there was. They get it through to Tingling. Hard shot from Nazir Tingling, but it is stopped. Mark Henderson will run it forward for the Woodsman. They push it down deep on the left side. Oh, wide open. Nice play. Loosen his bucket in the process. Recovering it, Angus LeBourne. Look at these moves. Guess Duncan just coming across the crease with him. We mentioned that's the one thing with Duncan. He's very reactive, very acrobatic. You get him moving, it can open up some opportunities. And LeBourne, who left the last game again with a knee problem, comes back and is looking terrific. Making it five to one with 5.55 to play. All right, you can see there's a bit less than 5.55, but I just want to say 5.55. Bolero. Tingling. Waits for his cohort to come out. Brendan Murphy is the fifth attacker. He's on the floor. About five to go here in the second. Low bouncer turned aside by the stick of Nyman Comber. Here's Josh Jordan. Toe drag gets through. That pass is deflected out front and goes awry. Murphy waves Jordan over. They've got 18 on the shot clock. Ripped from outside. There's Kane Kettle. King Kettle, who played for, I believe, the Oswegian Bears in the Arena Lacrosse League. Really fun to see some Arena League teams come down for this tournament next year. I think that'd be great. It'd be so interesting to see some of the NABL teams who are just building and building year after year, some of the Arena League teams who are just coming off the end of their season. They just finished a couple weeks ago with the Arena League Championship, Arena League East Championship, won by the Whippy Steelhawks. And then you get the Teams just gearing up for their you know, senior B seasons and things. That's a big hit. They're going to call that an illegal check. And we actually have a penalty being called. Interference call. Yeah, fair. To go on the cumber. 25 white, two minutes. That's going to be a power play for Maine. Nye McComber's had enough. He's heading out. The goalie walking to the match. He wants some water. Yeah, we're going to have a goalie water break, so the refs will stop the time on these running periods, running time periods, 3 by 15. Again, the winner of this game will go to the semifinal. They will finish in second place in the B pool and play at 6.30 against the winner of the A pool, which will be decided in our last game of the afternoon of the round robin play between the Onondaga Warriors and the Oneida Braves. Baker at the top on the power play. Big, oh, it's tipped. Baker's able to recover it though. Nice active stick there by Jimerson. Van Bibber hands it off. Baker was already looking towards the net before he'd secured it. Does get it back, has to take a shot late in the shot clock. Will race in to try and get his own rebound. And he's gonna run out of time, big collision. Woodsman will go ahead and they've got a man all alone. Oh, and it is getting heated in the other end, Lebrecht. Rips the glove off. One of the woodsmen and tosses it aside. 
That's Hiram McComber who's saying, yeah, let's go. I'm ready. Wow, that escalated quickly behind the play. So Hiram McComber going to the box, as is Van Bibber. Okay, yeah. Well. Uh, is it evened out? I can't hear it. Box, so it's going to be still five on four, right? Five minutes for these guys? Yeah. Five minutes. Okay, so they're, they're washed. Greg, what are they saying? I don't have them in my headset. And? Okay. There seems a lot of discussion for them to say five on four. That's only three words. Okay, we got five. Second with Greg Beecher from Blue Squatch Productions doing the directing and camera work. Hang on. Uh, you are seven black, five minutes rough, six white, five minutes rough, or Once five white. Starts Sorry. He's saying I should be out. No, no, no. But he doesn't get out of the box until play is blown in, and then he'll be released. And the matching minors will go into effect. Play is blown in, Comber is released, and Woodsman get their fourth runner on the floor. Well, so it's a major for Peyton Van Bibber. It's a huge opportunity for the Woodsman to really put this one away and cement their spot in the semifinals. We're into the final minute here of the second of two, uh, second of three 15 minute running time periods. Reach around shot by Jimerson, stopped by Duncan. Outlet pass may have led his teammate by just a touch too much. It's the ACDC theme. There's Kane Kettle with it. Twenty seconds, and Nye McComber is saying, "Hold on to it. Let's get the last shot." And they actually need one more player out on the floor. McComber's going to the bench for the final few seconds. They don't really need him to. They're already on the power play. They just need to send their fifth guy out. Oh, I guess was, I'm a little confused what was going on. But we have reached the second intermission. It's five to one Woods when we know that. There's 3.52 left to go on the penalty to Peyton Van Bibber. And we will be back with the conclusion of this game at the Northeast Invitational on Blue Squatch Productions. Country style scrambler, guaranteed to have something for everyone in your group. Firekeepers is also open for dinner Tuesday through Friday where you can get everything from a hot turkey sandwich to a turkey dinner, spaghetti, Whatever you want, guaranteed to have something for everybody in your group. Help support those who support us to make this happen. Leaves it there for Bertrand. Bertrand with the diving jump. Black Snye or Lacrosse Invitational North America is the premier fall invitational tournament in all of North America with teams traveling internationally to come. Non-stop action. Get your team registered for there. If you've never seen it before, we've got the last two years hosted. Team USA was there last year trying to get ready for the World Games coming up. Huge shout out to Scott and East and Connor Wilson for all they do for Blue Squatch Productions and helping support us as we continue to grow. What a drive by Blaze! It was their contribution that contributed to us being able to afford the wireless mics for this tournament. Thank you so much again to the Lax Nye group. Tucked away amidst the rolling hills of central New York lies a hidden gem, a place where people gather to celebrate and play games. Children, adults, and elders alike along the north-south passway now called Route 81, nine miles south of the city of Syracuse at exit 16 on the lands of the Onondaga stands a longhouse of history and recreation. Tasha Hilde Dakwa translated from the ancient Onondaga language means where they play games and under the roof of this great house the Onondaga Nation Arena serves the surrounding community with a full staff of maintenance security and all other custodial needs to ensure a safe and secure facility they also feature an elders room with seats and tables 
dedicated to those who may need to watch the game away from the abundant five, regular straight. seating. <laughs> it is adorned with portraits of the faces of players. All right, we are ready to roll with period number three. The final pool B round robin game. Woodsman leading the main Northman five to one. Everything's sorted out. We're five on five. There's 352 left in the matching majors to Peyton Van, Van Bibber for Maine and Harry McComber for Woodsman. Woodsman have the ball off the faceoff. Winner list going to the semifinals. Loser to the fifth place game tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. The semi, it will be the first semi for the, the winner here. Oh, hard rip by Kane Kettle, but Duncan with the stop. A little sidearm pass. Nice outlet. And Dubé running through tra some traffic. Four check pressure. Dubé going right to the net. Going all the way. Shoots and scores. Dubé kind of caught Nye McComber napping a little bit. McComber, I'm not sure McComber was expecting a shot here. Yeah, he's looking far side. He thinks pass and just leaves the pipe open. So Dubé says, yeah, I'll rifle that home. It's five to two. Maine's not going away. That just wasn't really anyone for Dubé to pass to. Nobody was getting open, but McComber's looking over there, wondering who, who he can throw the ball to. Play is underway. The far door is open beside the <laughs> woodsman bench. One of the refs alertly sees that and rushes over, stops play, <clears throat> goes over to get that change to make everything safe. Nice heads up move. Baker from the outside, that one got blocked and hit the crossbar. Murphy tucks it back home. Strange sequence on that one. You see Baker's shot from the outside. Murphy right there. Very close to the crease, but I think he's good. Tiptoeing the line. Nice job by Murphy to get position on that rebound as he gets his hip on River Montour, which allows him to be in perfect spot to grab that and tuck it home. And Brendan Murphy, he is having himself a day. Relatively new to the box game back. I remember doing the uh, IBLA championship, would have been in 2019, out in Huntington Beach, California. And uh, Murph was all fired up. He had that Irvin Skyfire that he'd created. And, he was calling games, he was doing, he was playing, he was running a lot of that tournament, and uh, he was very new to it. And you can see the difference over the intervening five years, how much his game has grown. He's still got that athleticism. I think he's quicker than he used to be. To drive to the net from Josh Jordan, that's gonna be a crease violation. It's a two goal game with 12 minutes to play here in the third period. Jimerson over center. Sorry, that's Nikki Snow. I can't remember. Jimmer Snow has the yellow shooting strings. Jimerson has the red hat on the stick. Here's LeBorn. Henderson, watched closely by Dubé. Hey, Len Dubé's having himself a pretty solid game here. Doing a lot of good things. And Duncan pounces on that loose ball after making the save protects it in his crease, <laughs> has to get his stuff together to pick it up and makes the high pass. Nice job by Lebrecht. CJ, CJ Lebrecht had to be athletic to get up there. What a goal. What a finish by Josh Jordan. He is fired up. You can't crease dive, but he is pushed into the crease by the Woodsman defender. Tucks it home before he goes in. And that's a beauty and what a run. Three goals in a row for the main Northman. We're trying to avoid relegation to the fifth place game. They're within a goal as we have 11 minutes to play here in the third period. McComber and Van Bibber are released. All the benches are back to their full original strength. Here's Tingling. Back up to Anzalone. Finds Baker coming in off the bench. Four righties. They isolate Tingling over on the far side. 
Shots wide. It's gonna be tracked down by Anceloni. Oh, takes a funny hop. The spin, and he managed to make the play, then gets back over center. Nice heads up play by Anzalone to make sure he avoided the over and back. Five seconds. So Dolan took a shot. That's going to ricochet into the Woodsman bench. <laughs> Thomas taking his time. The fifth attacker coming in off the bench. Oh, that bounces off the crossbar. The Woodsman think it was in. Okay, we've got it safe, so we're gonna take a break when there's a pause. And see, because the Woodsman thought that one went in. There's a save, Mary Cumber. A little fake outlet pass by John Printup. He'll slow it down, hand it off to Jimerson. Here's Nikki Snow. Kane Kettle. Kettle trots over to the far boards. Rip from the outside, Duncan, no problem for him with that Thailand Dibo shot. Long outlet pass to Brendan Murphy. He's going to the net, sees a lane. Oh, change of direction, shoots five hole. That one's swallowed up by McCumber. Jimerson ahead to Kettle. He'll come up and join Kettle on the offense. Kettle leaves it for him and Snow takes the pass from, from Jimerson. Here's Lee Thomas. Pick from Henderson. They fight through it. Oh, nice arm save, Duncan. Picked up by Len Dubay. What a game. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was Foglio. That was Blake Foglio. Josh Jordan going after it. Can't quite get it. It's going to be Woodsman possession. Snow goes up and Duncan comes out to check him. That's a heads up play by Duncan because Jimerson was uncovered and Duncan, the only guy who could get there. We saw Duncan come out and try and play some defense in their previous game to less propitious effect. Worked out this time though. Tingling tries to get through the double team. Didn't know where it went, but Dolan has it. Penalty coming to the Woodsman. It's gonna be a illegal cross check. So with seven and a half to go just about in the third period, a one goal Woodsman lead. The main Northman go to the power play and Kyle Baker's already up at the top, ready to get things rolling. Two minutes. Um, Tyler and Dybo, I think, going off. Where's that 88, Brad McGowan? We'll hear in a moment. Baker at the top. Over to, I was going to say Murphy, but Murphy was actually down low. Now he inverts to the shooter spot. Rips it. Save. Woodsman come up with it. Keith Printop passes it ahead. That's going to get away from Angus LeBorn, and it'll be swallowed up by Gavin Chambers. We'll just come in and hand it off to Anzalone. Tingling just getting out as the fifth guy on the power play. That shot was blocked. Harry McComber comes away with it. Fights through the double team, but LeBrec knocks it free. Ooh, tries it behind the back pass, does not connect with Anzalone. Big chop from Henderson onto the arm of Josh Jordan as the righties move around on the far side. Forecheck pressure by Prince by Baker, but nice job fighting through it by Mark Henderson. 45 seconds left on the power play, so the Northman after this possession from the Woodsman, as long as they get it back, we'll have a full 30 to work with. Late in the shot clock, just ripped by Jaden Jimerson. Anzalone slows it down, they got 17 on the power play. Anzalone 
Murphy's down low. Jordan tries to feed it through to Anzalone. He doesn't connect. Keith Printup with a nice safe pass out to the top to Jimerson. Penley expires. We're back to even strength. Five on five with 5.15 to play. Pass through to Thomas, just gets away. Snagged there by the Northman. They go on the run. Ben Bibber over to Murphy. Fires it, that one's soaked up by Keith Printup. The battle for the loose ball ensues. They're gonna call, I think, a loose ball push on Maine as, as Murphy wound up running over the top of Len Thomas, Lee Thomas, sorry. Here's Nikki Snow. I think slowing down a little bit with everyone's second game of the day. Third game of the weekend. The winner has another one to go this afternoon. They will be in semifinal number one at 6.30 here on Blue Squatch Productions YouTube channel. That one's blocked out front. Actually just hit somebody in the leg who was standing there. It was Dubay. Or Foglio. It was Foglio. Oh, off the bench, Baker! Scores! The captain, Kyle Baker, races in, takes the pass from Dolan, and tucks that one home. This is a nice pass. Dolan draws both the defenders. A little bit of a mix-up for the Woodsman, and they leave the most dangerous Northman, the captain, Kyle Baker, all alone. Nobody going to get him off the bench, and he is just licking his chops. Stays calm, though, and pots it very precisely to make it 5-5 with three and a half to go here in the third period. This is quite a matchup. LeBourne Jr. leaves it up top for Snow. That one pops away from River Monter up for an offensive shift. And it's snagged there by Anzalone who shovels it ahead. Gotta get after it. Actually goes through the legs of Sonny John, of, um, sorry, of the Woodsman player. And he's gonna get called for a loose ball possession foul. Minor interference. And Murphy will hand it off. The Northmen have it. Baker scored the last goal to tie it up. Directing traffic with his head. Ball still bouncing about on the floor. Josh Jordan fighting for it. A little push in the back by Tingling and that's gonna turn it over to the Woodsman. 2.39 to go, tie game. Next goal's huge. Could this be it? No, it's a Duncan save. Lee Thomas and the Woodsman will get the ball back but what an arm save by Brian Duncan. Lee Thomas pulls it down, shoots, stopped by Duncan, pounces out onto the rebound, reaches out of the crease, and gains possession. Oh, no, they're going to say a loose ball foul by Murphy. He'll go back to the Woodsman. Kane Kennel, watched by Foglio. Tries to get it to LeBourne, can't do it. Oh, it pops away from Murphy. The Woodsman still have it. They recover with Henderson getting the ball. Here's LeBourne. 13 on the shot clock. Two minutes to play in the third. Big swat by Dolan, knocks it loose. The ball bouncing around, just four on the shot clock. Maine doesn't need to pick this up. Penalty coming. 30 expires, but Maine is getting a penalty. Wow, what a time to take a penalty. It's gonna be Len Dubay with the hold. So with 1.47 to go, the Woodsmen go on the power play. Duncan popped to the bench to sort something out. He'll head back. The Northmen need to get some penalty killers out there. They've only got two guys on the floor. You can have four. Kyle Baker just orchestrating who's going Final out. Final four. Jimerson starts with the top of the power play. Woodsman going strong right. K9 
Kane Kettle. Back and forth. Got four righties out there. Saved by Duncan. Dorfman come away with the ball. Nice job. Van Bibber runs over center, heads to the net, and then peels back out. Takes a huge hit just as he passes the ball. Can absolutely flatten McGowan. Murphy, short-handed, shoots just wide. Well, he liked to kill the time, but that was a pretty good chance for Brendan Murphy. Now he's hustling after Kane Kettle, and the pass is just out of Kettle's reach. He had Brendan Murphy on his back. Maine gets it. 55 to play. The penalty extends beyond the time left in the game, so Maine, if they're gonna score, it's gotta be shorthanded. Snow comes up and gets some pressure on. Nice work to hang on to it by Josh Jordan. Remember, each team has one timeout they can use. Kyle Baker will get it. I wonder if they're gonna take a timeout. Nope, they'll just keep playing. Maine has a player back in their own end. You can hear somebody down below us yelling timeout. LeBrec has it. Shovels it over to Baker. 15 on the shot clock. Rips one. Comes out to Anzalone. He rips one as well. I don't. Oh, is there a delayed penalty? Yeah, slash. Oh, sorry, I did not see that. That's why they're shooting. Maine just wanted to get the shot on and get things blown down so they can go out. Five white, two on minutes four. slash. We'll pull Brian Duncan and go five on four and wait for one shot. Six and one half dozen the other. If you don't pull the goalie, they are going to take their time out. So let's chat about it. Greg, do you want to hop on? Unmute yourself. Sorry, I'm, you have to put your other headset on. Dueling headsets. So we've got 14. Can you hear me? Okay, 14.6. No, you don't have your head in. Sorry, I'm putting you through all this, Greg. 14.6 seconds to play. We're four on four. Maine has taken their time out. So their options are pull the goalie, wait for the last couple of seconds to take a shot so you don't risk giving up an empty net goal at the other end, or you keep the goalie in the net and you go with four on four and you can shoot whenever there's a good look. Yeah. You've lost. And remember, the winner goes to the semis, the loser to the fifth place game against the Utica Yeti tomorrow at 10 a.m. And yeah, they are pulling him. They've pulled Duncan. They're going to go for one shot. I think that makes sense. I mean, in 14.6 seconds, you're probably not, you know, the chance of getting two is not huge. Keith Printup is pointing down the floor. Not Okay, so Keith Printup was pointing, saying they need to start down the floor, which is crazy. It's not going to really matter because they're not shooting probably until pretty late in this game clock. If nobody scores here, we do go to a shootout. Yeah, I can't hear you, Greg. Here's Kyle Baker up to Anzalone. Five seconds, four, three. Baker shoots, stop. Keith Printup is just, he's going to fling it down, but the clock is over. And we are going to a shootout with the winner to the semis, the loser to the fifth place game. Each team will take three penalty shots. And if it's tied after that, we just go back and forth. I had myself muted. That's probably why you couldn't hear me. Nah, still not hearing you. <laughs> oh, well, I was muted. Now I can at least hear myself through the broadcast set. So everybody else can hear me. Okay. Yeah, oh, I you can figure out. You can just do your thing now. <laughs> Sorry, I made you throw your headset on. I thought it was a fun little chat. Looks like the it goalies are each going to their own ends. So I think we're going to go back and forth, one end, then the other, as opposed to, you know, having the goalies alternate in the one net. Yeah. So it's 3-3 three, three, and then, I believe, 1-1. One, one. Yes. That's what I was saying when you were supposed to be listening to me. It was It's three shots for each team. If it's still tied, then they go to just back and forth. But if somebody scores more than the other in these three... That's it. 
Looks like Jaden Jimerson is planning on taking the first shot for the Woodsman. The idea is for this to save some time. We don't have to go to overtime. We don't have to, you know, not be sure when it's going to finish. By the time we get this explanation out, though, it might be, might as well just gone, but anyway. No, I like it. I like it. It's a good way to finish it up. Next game will come pretty quickly with the Onondaga Warriors and Oneida Braves. Remember that one with Onondaga and Oneida both having beaten Utica. Utica goes to the fifth place game and Oneida and Onondaga playing for first place in the A pool. And it is indeed Jaden Jimerson. He will run in on Brian Duncan. See if he tries to throw some fakes and gets Duncan moving. Duncan stays deep as he did yesterday on a penalty shot and that costs him as he leaves the space and Jimerson buries it. I guess that's what he's comfortable with but I don't like Duncan staying so deep in his net. No, it's a weird thing. You see some of these goalies that hold on to it like there's no tomorrow. Jack Anzalone. Comes in on his wide side. There's a stick save by Nyma Comer. Edge Woodsman. Who's next? It's Lee Thomas. Another righty. Maine really needs a stop from Brian Duncan here because they are between a rock and a hard place if Thomas puts this one home. Duncan stops. Oh, yeah, there's the move from Lee Thomas. Hard, hard fake. Duncan bites hard and leaves a bunch of net for Lee Thomas on the far side. Oof. Kyle Baker has to score or this one's over. Heads out wide, really wide. Comes in at an angle. Shoots, scores! Kyle Baker, wait, yeah, the captain puts it in. Not sure what the signals were. It looked like the ref was waving it off for a second. Here we go, Angus LeBourne. He's going to his offside, he's gonna come back. Right? No, he's staying over there. He's staying over there, he comes in, shoots, scores! That'll win it for the Woodsman. Angus LeBourne closes it out, what a game. We've had a couple contenders for game of the weekend. That is the one right there, my friends. Here is that finish by Angus LeBourne, senior. Talking it past Brian Duncan, who was sensational. And we have a six to five win for the Woodsman in the shootout over the Maine Northman. That means Maine goes to the fifth place game tomorrow morning against the Utica Yeti at 10 a.m. And the Woodsman will finish second in pool B. And that puts them in the 6.30 semifinal. So we have one more round robin pool play game. And the winner between Onondaga and Oneida will finish first and will actually have to play pretty quickly again at 6.30. The loser will come second and will actually get to play at 7.45. So it might not be a horrible thing to lose that game. You know, get the second semi, get a bit more rest. But then you have to play CTC. I don't know, Woodsman or no easy, easy walk in the park. Anyway, we will be back for that one in not two minutes, 17 minutes. We have a little break for Greg Beecher and Blue Squatch Productions and the Onondaga Nation Arena and the Northeast Invitational. I'm Stephen Stamp, thanks for being with us. We'll see you in 17 minutes. We cordially invite you to come and experience the beautiful surroundings in and around the Onondaga Nation's Arena. For a unique historical visit, whether you're here for a day or evening sporting